it's, dong. It's actually chicken feet doing this. This is so now this is like a cow soy salad almost. Eat the flour, bro. Eat the flour. Can you eat the flour? Ooh. Oh, it's here on St. Mark's in the East Village and are the owners from Dongbe. The logo is a char chicken foot. They've got food from all over Sichuan, Guangdong. It, it's, it's actually chicken feet doing this. This is their logo, but it's called A-Roll. They got different locations, one in Flushing, but this is their St. Mark's location. If you guys look at the spread here, we're gonna talk about the skewers in a second, but you have Guobao Roll, you have the surf clam salad, you have the Sichuan French yeah. fries. Uh, she called it Lang Ya uh, Tudo, oh, yeah, wolf Lang teeth Lang. potatoes. And then you have Lataji, they have boneless and bone with bone, okay? And then you have kind of a Canto dish, which is the stir fry instant This is more noodles. like a Ta Tan Teng dish. Yeah, but let's take a look at the skewers. Oh my goodness, you've got Shao Kao right here. This is just the straight piece oh, of Western straight. bread, not yeah. even a manto. Yo, check it, they got the, this is their Chong Yo Bing, it's super thick. Oh my goodness, you got shrimps, all different types mm. of things. They got a liquor license here. All right, you guys, we gotta dig into some of the food here at A-Roll. Like we said, it's a chain from China, but it's been sort of locally adapted. Even the Flushing location is gonna be different from the East Village one. All right, you guys, of course, I gotta lead off with the signature dish, their logo, like a deboned <laughs> chicken foot. So this recipe for the chicken feet is the same marinade as the one in China. So this is the one thing that they keep consistent to the American version. Here's Guo Bao Ro, this is like sweet and sour pork. Mmm. Yo, the chicken feet though. Feng Zhao Feng Zhuan. It's pretty good. Mmm. Is the Guobao roll good? Guobao roll That's good. a very Dongbei dish. Let me try the instant noodles right here. This is like your cha cha ting. Gong Zai Mean dish. What do you think about how everybody, it's almost like a greatest hits of all these different provinces, you know, Guangdong, Sichuan, Dongbei. Mm. I feel like everything's getting mixed up nowadays. This is a uh, Yang Rou Chuan lamb skewer. No. Oh. Damn. Not gonna lie, I think more Sichuan chefs need to cook Cantonese food. Is it a hybrid? That, that was fire, yeah. That was like some Sichuan gongs, I mean. What I love is that you can eat these little peppers. They're not that hot. It's a little bit of heat. Mmm. Oh, clusters of peppers. Oh, you're down on these surf clams. This is more of like a Japanese thing, but you know how it is. Nowadays in Asia, everything's mixed up. It wouldn't shock me if they had kimchi on the menu too. Guys, you know how I do with shrimp. Shell on. Mm. Everything. These are not testicles, I repeat. The mm. Brussels sprouts. I really thought there was a chance it was gonna be testicles and I was gonna have it. Hey, hit me that small lot. This is actually, I was really looking forward to this. <laughs> not gonna lie, it looks like that toast got a little, uh, Sprayed on, yeah. Pause. A little smile on my tung yo bing. Mm. Listen guys, it's Friday night. We're on St. Mark's, coming to A-Roll, straight from China. It's fun. A-Roll, this is gonna be a new late night hotspot, I can tell. Starting off here at Rin, which actually means poor in Thai. So their drink menu, when it gets going, is gonna be very crazy and very inventive, I'm sure. Uh, but right here, they got a dish I have never seen before. I've been to so many Thai restaurants. This is called La Ting. And this is actually based off of a royal dish. Um, and it's essentially like an egg nest that's wrapped around pork and shrimp. And, uh, and then you pour this cucumber relish on top. And then you have these fried lotus leaf chips with Thai spices. And then you have something that is more of a fusion with American strawberries, which is a, they call it Tom strawberry salad. So it's a little bit spicy with the tamarind flavor. Maybe it's like a papaya salad except with strawberries. So that's interesting. But anyways, guys, let's try this egg nest first because this is something I've never had before. Have you ever had an egg nest? No, you haven't. All right, guys, this is a royal dish, not necessarily a street food, but from royalty. Mmm, got cucumber relish. It's delicious, sweet, spicy. I like the egg that kind of wraps around it. Doesn't matter that it's in a nest form rather than an omelet form. I don't know, but I like it regardless. All right, everybody, let's try this strawberry salad. The Tom strawberry. Oh my God. Never had spicy strawberries before. By the way, Rin is super brand new and it's really vibey in here and I could see this being a perfect date spot. Lotus chips with Thai spices, look at that. 
Look at all those speckles. Mmm. Bro, if you like those kettle potato chips, this is amazing. This is almost like the Thai version and it has that kind of like lime spice that's kind of hitting the back of your mouth and tingling your mouth right now. I love it, this is so good. All right, so now the entrees are here and they are doing things differently. First off, this is your soft shell crab curry. And I just the way they played it and how you're supposed to eat it, you're supposed to take these rice noodles, put them on my plate over here, and then I add all my little accoutrements and kind of make myself a little salad. Look, they even ball them up for you. Don't make me do it right now, I'm just gonna do it. Ah. And then I top it off with some of this soft shell crab curry. You can see all the little crab meats is shredded all up in that. Yeah, I might just have to eat it all in one bite. I don't know. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to eat it. That is delicious. And then here is a take on cow soy, which is a little bit different than your usual cow soy noodles that come in like a noodle soup form. And also like a braised chicken. This is fried chicken. And then what they told me to do is to pull a little lime on top of it and kind of mix it in like a salad. So now this is like a cow soy salad almost. Let's try this. Ooh. That's so interesting. That's giving me more like saucy noodle vibes, almost like a spaghetti type with fried chicken on top. And it's got a nice spicy kick. So if you're into spice, definitely come here. Last but not least, they have the crying tiger ribeye. This is one of the classic Thai ways to make steak. And it definitely mostly heavily comes from the dipping sauce right here. As you guys can see, look at all the spices in this thing. I'm about to just lather my ribeye pieces just like that. Oh, oh. I love this spot because actually all the five different owners and partners of this restaurant come from five different parts of Thailand. And as you guys know, Thailand, very regional when it comes to the cuisine. So I just love the diversity here. I would definitely check it out. They have some very traditional dishes and they're doing their own take on traditional dishes like the strawberry salad. So definitely check out Rin over in the East Village. I'm telling you, the food fusions are getting crazier and crazier, but obviously the name has a cool ring to it because it's playing off Memphis soul. Memphis is big on soul music and country music as well. Uh, I would say, man, definitely, if this idea appeals to you, man, definitely check it out, man. It's pretty interesting, and I think that they really are fusing. All right, in my hand, I have the mac and cheese ramen, okay? Definitely different. Obviously, the Korean flair is in there with the ramen. And then I have this bulgogi meatloaf sandwich that is gigantic and dripping, and it has a fried egg in it. This is a first time for me. I've eaten a lot of Asian food out there, but I've never seen something like this. I heard the owners, it's a mixed team of owners, so there's definitely some Korean guys on the squad and probably some maybe Memphis barbecue guys too. Wow, look at this. I can see some of the gochujang kind of kimchi slaw influence right there, and uh, the bun is nice, so let's eat it. Slaw is really nice. The bulgogi patty, definitely interesting. Here we go, guys. Try some of this right quick by itself. That's good, but I think small la, our chili oil, that you go great on this. And it goes great on things with cheese, so let me just pour a little bit on, ba-bang. And get that truffly, tingly, a little bit flavorful umami oil on top. Mmm, that gets kicked up with that. All right, I'm gonna try the sandwich with small uh... Oh my goodness, Memphis soul. It's got that Memphis soul, BTS soul. Big Memphis or even Texas style barbecue in with Korean flavors and I just think that's cool to see. I wanna see more of it. So you guys check out Memphis Soul over in the East Village. All right, next up on new Asian concepts, we have this brand new Vietnamese restaurant over here on Clinton Street, which is not a street that has a lot of authentic Asian food, by the way. Um, but this is their pho right here. We're at the Cloud Restaurant. Guys, above us, look at the clouds. Just look. Crazy, crazy. It looks and crazy. Um, but yeah, this is actually, the broth is gonna remind you more of a Northern Hanoi style pho. Very beefy but the noodles are still gonna be Southern style because I think that's just what the New York market is just used to. But look at this beef. 
That's a big slab right there. Is that the, oh no, this is the flank steak. Nice and soft and raw. It's about to cook right there. Let me just taste it real quick. Mmm, very beefy. I can tell that it's stewed for 36 hours. That's how they do it here. As you guys know, unfortunately, Sriracha has been losing market share since, uh, you know, they can't produce any. So a lot of Vietnamese spots are turning to other brands. This is a popular one. All right, guys. This is the Cloud Vietnamese Pho. Oh my gosh, this slab of beef is crazy. It is thick. Mm. I mean, I think that they're doing pretty good pho here and to have it here on Clinton Street where there's not a lot of Asian food is really important. So you need that Asian representation. I mean, look at this cut of beef. That was a big piece of fat right there. But I'm gonna show you the ball luck lock. This is mixed up nicely with the egg and a lot of the accoutrements, the greens. Let's get into it. This is probably a lot of people's second favorite dish at Vietnamese restaurants aside from the pho. Mmm, ooh, that is actually really good, guys. I think this is one of the better ball block locks I've had in New York City. But right in my hand, I got Smala. The shop is open, guys. It's open for orders. Click on the Shopify link down below. Smala sauce .shop, my Shopify. Let's try it on ball block lock. Mmm. So good, man. One thing I like about Smala is you can just eat it on rice. It's a great finishing oil. Not too spicy, but definitely has that kick. Mm. You know, when it comes to Vietnamese food in New York City, pho is maybe not exactly mainstream. I mean, it's definitely not on the same level as ramen. I think on the West Coast, in Seattle, in the Bay Area, everybody eats pho. It's mainstream out there. So of course you gotta offer your pork ribs. And these are piping hot, fresh off I wanna say the grill, they're marinated with nook mom. I can smell that sweet, sweet marinade. Let's get into it, they're super hot. That's why I can't even pick them up with my fingers. Oh, wow. Nice candy, crispy outside. Almost like a, like you get something from the Cantonese roast meat spot. Mmm, guys, come on. They got a soulful playlist. You got the clouds above you looking crazy. You got great ties tea. You got very solid pho. You have a great bowl luck lock. I mean, this is what Vietnamese food in New York is like right now. So I hope they do well. It's a brand new spot, very vibey. Our next new Asian concept in New York City is actually a brand new Arabica coffee location over here in Nolita. You guys, they are entering the American market. Of course, originally it is from Kyoto. So I'll tell you this, it is not cheap coffee, but it's very high quality. 625 for smalls, this is a matcha, this is a Kyoto uh, latte, and then you have a ham and cheese croissant here. It looks beautiful. So I gotta tell you guys, the vibe is impeccable. It's mostly white, very clean. A lot of hipsters, very artsy people here. Tones of green, got a little greenery plants in there, but overall, really cool space. I'm excited. All right, starting off, we got the Kyoto. I gotta stir it up and, and ruin the art. I'm sorry. <sighs> Pretty good, man. Very smooth. <sighs> 625, though, that is pricey. All right, guys, here we got the matcha latte. You guys know what it is. Let me just drink it right now, as is. It's a standout. You know, I'm not a huge matcha latte fan. David likes matcha lattes more than I do, but this one is hitting. Let me try the ham and cheese croissant with the little golden eyeball in the middle. Looking beautiful, very aesthetic. Mmm, look at that. The yolk is all baked into there. A big chunk. Almost like a boiled yolk. Mmm. Okay, that kind of had a weird texture, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. For being probably the most expensive coffee chain per ounce in the city, I guess, is it worth it? I mean, I think the quality of the decor, the vibe is is on point. Does it taste different? 
can I tell as a non-coffee aficionado? I cannot tell how elite the coffee is, but it is very good. Um, is it worth $6.25? I don't know. It might be worth the Instagram post, though. What's going on, guys? Our next Asian concept is Nazli and Cole. We're here with Kadisha. Uh, this is a really cool, unique concept. Tell us about it. Yeah, for sure. So we are a Pakistani and Sri Lankan inspired bakery. We are using flavors throughout the entire diaspora in our baked goods. Our teas are sourced from small farmers in Sri Lanka and so are our spices. Are you Pakistani or Sri Lankan or both? I'm Pakistani, my husband is Sri Lankan. Okay, cool. That's a dope collaboration between Daisy countries, right? Uh, can you just break down like some of the items? Absolutely. So this cake right here is a cardamom sponge. Cardamom you can find in any savory and sweet dish in most Pakistani mm. and Sri Lankan uh, uh, foods, but it has a really nice twist with mangoes and raspberries. We've got a carrot chai cake right here, so Ooh. freshly ground chai spices. Carrot chai. with chai. We've got some cannellis, we've got Nani's banana bread, spiked with uh, cardamom and nutmeg, mm. and then our signature cookie. Right here we've got a um, chamomile cake with lavender and wild blueberries, as well as some fennel. All right, well, listen guys, we gotta try some stuff here at the Pakistani Sri Lankan bakery. All right, you guys, if you are looking at a mango cardamom cake, guys, rose syrup, all different types of things here. This is a chai carrot cake. Now, I was talking to Kadisha. She actually came from a tech background, sort of a very, like, stereotypical, you know, upbringing for, like, a lot of Asian kids going into STEM. But, you know, she was a hobbyist baker, and she turned it into a profession now. And like we said, guys, this looks so different from a Galab Jamun or a Kofi, but she said that this is incorporating inspirations from Galab Jamun, Kofi, and all these other uh, brown, you know, daisy desserts into a modern Western cake. Yo, that's really good. Eat the flour, bro. Eat the flour. Can you eat the flour? All right, guys. Eat the I flour. Think there's a dandelion on top. Wow. No, they cut off all the little. All right, guys. Things. Are you gonna do it? Eat, eat Hold on, man. Let me ask, man. I'm not. I gotta ask, man. All right. <laughs> Last but not least, we've got this chai carrot cake. Um, I think it's so dope because you know, online right now you so see so much subtle Asian baking, whether it's South Asian or East Asian or Southeast Asian. But uh, I haven't personally got to come in contact with that much of the South Asian daisy side, so this is dope. You know, I'm not a subject matter expert, but I definitely taste a lot of influence from the Pakistani and the Sri Lankan side. In these, a lot of cardamom, rose syrup, but obviously, you know, juxtaposed with a Western cake. It's pretty dope. It's almost like Prince Tea House, but Daisy Prince Tea House. All right, you guys, next up on Brand New Asian Concepts, we have somebody bringing authentic Bami Hang street Thai uh, egg noodles to New York City. Andrew, they barely speak English in there. We've got the cracklings on top. I heard that this is very difficult to find because this is something you would really get from a street vendor, possibly in the morning or the lunch. You've got ground pork here. You've got chashu right here. You've got the sprouts. Uh, Bami actually means egg noodle. Hang means dry. Obviously, this is influenced by um, a heavy influx of Southern Chinese immigrants, primarily Cantonese and Hokkien, that went to uh, Bangkok, like I wanna say at least like 100, starting about 150 years ago. Ba Mi Hang, very difficult to find in New York City, not royal style, street food style. All right, you guys, uh, like we said, Ba Mi Hang, Egg noodles, dry. Um, it's really good. I want to say it's missing a little bit of the kick, the pungentness that you would get from like, you know, a street stall in Bangkok or Sword Cowboy or whatever. But, you know, we're on the streets of Fidei right now. It's kind of crazy. Might see something crazy pop off. Like we said, guys, this video is brought to you by Smala, www.smalasauce.com. It's out right now from Sichuan to Sicily. It goes perfect on these egg noodles. Ba Mi Hang. This is actually the first time I've ever had this dish in my life and I'm having it with small eye. All right, you guys, you guys are looking at one of those like pan Asian dishes. You can find this at any Asian fusion spot. I heard you can find it, maybe some version of this in Thailand too. Thai fried honey chicken. Fried chicken with a lettuce wrap. It's good. All right, you guys, we are on the border of Soho and West Village right now. I'm here with Quentin. 
you're looking at a French guy who owns a Japanese onigiri spot. Are a lot of people shocked when they see you? A little bit at the very beginning, yeah, for sure. But um, so I come from like a French hospitality background and I wanted to offer something like different, gluten free and like affordable. So that's why we put up Koro Koro in the city. Right, and you guys do a few things different than like a traditional Japanese owner would do, yeah. right? Like what are the differences in your guys' onigiri? We fusionate like different kind of cuisine so we can find like some Cuban flavor, some Jamaican flavor, sometimes some French flavor too. And also you guys serve it hot, right? Yes, hot and made fresh water as well. All right, you guys, hey. Koro Koro. All right, welcome to Koro Koro. This is our next Asian concept in New York City. Just opened up over in West Village. This is a onigiri spot, and they actually have some non-traditional onigiris. They have some jerk ones, and they have a sexy shrimp. They have a Cubano one. They didn't have it today, so I got the truffle tuna. Nice and fresh, gluten-free. Mmm. Let's check it out. Ramone! Mmm. Get a ramune, get a onigiri. Um, so upon having this, I mean, definitely it's a little bit non-traditional. So I think if you're looking for a very, very traditional onigiri experience, maybe this is not quite it. There's probably another spot I would recommend in Chinatown called Yaya. But considering there's probably nothing like this on this street, I don't know. I got high hopes for it. Let's check out this chicken one. Mmm. Oh. Woo! This one's flavorful. Here I got two other flavors. I have a sexy shrimp and a yama, which is a green coconut curry. And uh, I guess it just begs the question, how popular can onigiris get in America? They have an emoji for it on your iPhone, but really, I mean, could, could it keep spreading? I mean, it's, it's simply just a rice ball with seaweed, but the form factor makes it really easy to eat. Let's try the sexy shrimp. Mmm. Not bad, not bad. Plum, kind of spicy. Mmm. Yama, chicken curry. See it right there. Ooh. Oh, good flavor on all of these guys. It's kind of like pizza. Onigiri's are a blank slate. You can fill it with anything. I mean, I think it's so cool that, you know, Japanese culture is at this point where you have all different types of people running a Japanese concept. I think the spot is cool and it's just adding something different because honestly, you can put anything in rice, whether it's a rice bowl or in an onigiri rice ball. So I don't know, it's exciting. And I want to come back and try the jerk, the jerk it up flavor and the Cuban flavor. Cause obviously those are the two flavors that I'm like, Ooh, that could be crazy. But anyways, guys, check it out. Cora Cora West Village. All right, our next Asian concept in New York City is actually not Asian. It is the second location of a very, very famous bakery called La Cabra. It's actually a Danish bakery, uh, kind of like mixing Scandinavian and Japanese aesthetics together. Um, but man, it's not really Asian food, but I just see a lot of Asians here. I think Asians really like this bakery, particularly this one. I think it might be the design mixed in with that. Uh, Asians love pastries. I see all types of Asians here, by the way. South Asian, East Asian, okay, Southeast Asian, everybody. All right, guys. So as you can see that there's definitely are some kind of Japanese hints, but I think that's because uh, a lot of Scandinavian designs take from Japanese minimalism and Japanese also borrow from Scandinavian minimalism at the same time. So it's kind of hard to tell, but there was definitely some Asian accents kind of looking like tatami mats or the, or the, or the paper separators. Anyways, guys, I got the sweet bun here. I feel like this is something that a lot of Asian people would get. Um, I'm going to cut this in half, make it look nice. Ooh, ooh, crazy. Ooh, and then here I have the shoe. You pronounce it as shoe. This almost looks like the top of a bolo bao, Chinese pineapple bun. Let's... Dang, I might have to try this one first. I never eat this with a fork, but he was like, yo, do you want a fork? I was like, yeah, let me not eat it like a barbarian. Yes. Mad good, man. Mad good. Mad delicious. All right, this is some peach cream inside of here. Guys, <laughs> this is messing up my, my diet. I don't know which one I like more, man, but I like the circular buns here. That's all I can say. Guys, La Cabra was their second location, and uh, a lot of people do mistake in it as a Japanese concept. That's what the worker told me, and so yeah, I guess it, it's not really an Asian concept, but it sort of is. 